Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over problem number 5 of our Epic Must Know Trig Identities proofs. In these proofs we're going to be carrying out uh, the proofs using the fundamental identities. This standard is covered in trigonometry and pre-calculus courses. Don't forget to take a look at the link in the description to gain access to the worksheets that has all the problems in them and the links showing you how to carry out the proofs for each individual problem. All right, so for question number five, the task here is to prove that cosecant square beta, no, I'm sorry, let's write that again. We're proving that cosecant beta sine square beta is equal to sine beta. All right, let's go ahead and carry out the proof. If you take a look at the yellow box to your right, you can see a list that contains the steps of, for the strategies that we're going to be using to carry out our tree identity proofs. All right, so in the problem, what we're, what we're, we're proving, we have cosecant beta times sine square beta on the left. This is a product of two trig functions, and on the right side, we have sine beta. Now, if you take a look at one, two, three, four on our strategy for proving trig identities, notice in number one, if we have the product and quotient, it's beneficial to write them using sine and cosine and reduce. All right, so that's the main purpose of writing the trig functions in terms of sine and cosine only because it enables you to see common factors that can be divided out so you can reduce the problem. Okay, all right, so if we take a look at what we have here, we have cosecant, which can be written in terms of sine. Implementing the reciprocal identity, cosecant can be written as one over sine beta. And then sine squared beta, using properties of exponents, we know this is sine beta times sine beta. And on the right side, we just have sine beta. All right, so now you, applying number one in our strategy list, we can now see that there are common factors that can be divided out, namely sine beta. So sine beta and sine beta can be divided out. So we have one, one. Before I proceed, let me write down what I did here. So over here, what we basically used was the reciprocal identity. All right. And then we simplified what we have by dividing out common factors. So now we have sine beta is equal to sine beta. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been able to prove that the identity is in fact true. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies of trig identities, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to um, our review series. We have math videos uploaded to our site on a weekly basis. So when you subscribe, you can get notifications of future uploads. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this presentation or any trig identity proof that you would like us to work out for you in a video, just post it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to respond. Okay. Tons of support resources can be found at our website, mathgotserve.com. And also don't forget again to take a look in the link in the description to gain access to the worksheet that has all the proof identities, all the trig identities present, as long as the links taking you to the proofs. Have a wonderful day.